Welcome to the Florida Department of Transportation's TRIPS Procurement Training for Federal Fiscal Year 2020. The goal of this webinar is to provide guidance regarding the minimum procurement procedures subrecipients of grant funding must establish to be compliant with federal and state requirements. At the end of this training, participants should be able to identify procurement procedures, identify how to establish compliance with federal and state requirements, submit clear and complete documentation to the FDOT project coordinator for approval to receive reimbursements for eligible expenses incurred, and understand the purpose of the Transit Research Inspection Procurement Services contract, or as we call it, TRIPS. Why is the following procurement guidelines important? State and federal rules mandate that appropriate procurement procedures be followed when using state and federal funds to purchase goods and services. Florida Statute Chapter 287, Florida Administrative Code Chapter 60A, and the Federal Transit Administration Circular 4220.IF provide additional information concerning the need to follow procurement guidelines. The procurement process also promotes transparency and non-discriminatory actions, while ensuring that the best value is achieved for the money being spent. Moreover, with the introduction of direct costs, we encourage you to be mindful that all direct costs billed to the department are subject to applicable procurement requirements. With this in mind, you should evaluate which project expenses will be the least burdensome to obtain procurement documentation. Both capital expenses and operating expenses can be subject to procurement requirements. Capital expenses are associated with long-term acquisition and leases of physical assets such as buses, vans, or other paratransit vehicles, capital cost of contracting, radio and communication equipment, wheelchair lifts and restraints, vehicle maintenance, computer hardware, and construction activities. These assets often are quite expensive and have a physical or functional life which extends over several years. Operating expenses are those expenses that are consumed in a single calendar or fiscal year to make the transit system operate. These expenses include personnel salaries, fuel and oil, tires and vehicle maintenance, vehicle licenses, vehicle insurance, and uniform purchases. Here we see a preliminary procurement process flowchart that identifies the initial steps in the procurement process. To begin, the subrecipient should define the item and quantity to be procured then identify the funding source. If no state and or federal funding sources will be used to purchase the good or service, the local agency procurement rules would apply. However, if the answer is yes, and the subrecipient is planning on using funds that are reimbursed through a federal funding source, then the subrecipient should determine the type of procurement and the level of procurement once this is completed. Move forward with the federal procurement process requirements. On the other hand, if the subrecipient plans on using funds that are reimbursed through a state funding source, the subrecipient should determine the type of procurement and the level of procurement once this is completed. Move forward with the state procurement process requirements. Procurement requirements can vary depending on the funding source. When purchasing goods and services as a subrecipient of federal grant programs, specific federal procurement rules will apply. Whereas if only state funds are used to acquire goods and services, specific state procurement rules will apply. If both federal and state funds are being used, the rules that are more stringent would apply. However, if an agency is only using local funds, then the agency's internal procurement policies would be applied to that procurement. As noted earlier, the funding source will dictate the procurement requirements that should be followed. The major differences between federal and state procurement requirements are state procurement thresholds are currently more stringent than federal procurement thresholds applicable federal clauses and master contracts or purchase orders, and attorney certifications that are only required for commodity or contractual service procurements funded with state grant funds. Procurement requirements apply to all cost invoiced to the department. As noted earlier, the first step is to determine the procurement threshold of the good or service being procured. Goods or services costing less than $2,500 qualifies as a micro-purchase. Goods or services costing between $2,500 and $34,999 qualifies as a small purchase, while goods or services costing $35,000 or more qualifies as a competitive procurement. 
Subrecipients are prohibited from dividing or reducing the size of a procurement merely to avoid the additional procurement requirements applicable to larger acquisitions. If the amount of the procurement is close to the threshold of the next procurement level, subrecipients should comply with the requirements of the next procurement level, as it is more difficult to ensure compliance later. Make contact with your FDOT Transit Project Coordinator early on in the process. For micro-purchases, purchases less than $2,500, subrecipients should adhere to the following steps. Determine the total cost and the type and quantity of the item being procured. Gather price information and determine if the price is fair and reasonable. To determine if a price is fair and reasonable, subrecipients may rely on recent research, experience, or recent similar purchases. Select a vendor or contractor that accepts all applicable federal clauses. Complete the micro purchase documentation program form. Keep all documentation to support price determination as they will be reviewed during the triennial review process. This is the micro purchase documentation form. It is important to completely fill out section one, subrecipient information and section two, micro-purchase procurement documentation. In order to successfully complete this form, it is crucial that the purchase order clearly specify the item or services being purchased and the terms and conditions of the purchase. For small purchases, purchased between $2,500 and $34,999, subrecipients should adhere to the following steps. Complete a price analysis prior to seeking quotes. The purpose of the price analysis, sometimes referred to as an independent cost estimate, is to demonstrate that the quotes solicited are fair and reasonable and in line with the anticipated costs for the goods and services being procured. Generally, a comparison of proposed prices received in response to the solicitation is sufficient to establish price reasonableness. Other methods to determine price reasonableness may include comparison of a catalog or market prices, comparison of regulated prices such as utility purchases, or comparison with recent prices for similar goods or services. Solicit at least three competitive price or rate quotes from an adequate number of qualified sources. Quotes must be adequately documented and include the names and addresses of vendor, item description, unit price, all other fees and charges, and applicable taxes. Select the vendor or contractor that accepts all applicable federal clauses. Complete the small purchase documentation form. If only one price or rate quotation is received, the subrecipient is required to complete a sole source justification form. Ensure that the vendor is open and willing to signing off on the applicable federal clauses. Submit the small purchase documentation form to the FDOT Transit Project Coordinator for approval, along with the appropriate procurement checklist, if applicable. Obtain approval for the procurement from FDOT Transit Project Coordinator. Complete the procurement process with the selected vendor. Keep documentation to support the method of purchase, basis for vendor selection, and reasonableness of price. Here we have the small purchase price analysis form. Section 1, subrecipient information, and Section 2, price analysis details must be completed. As highlighted earlier, the purpose of a price analysis sometimes referred to as an independent cost estimate, is to demonstrate that the quotes solicited are fair and reasonable and in line with the anticipated cost for the goods and services being procured. On display now is the small purchase documentation form. It is important to completely fill out Section 1, Subrecipient Information, and Section 2, Results of a Small Purchase Competitive Bid Process. This form will be submitted to your FDOT Transit Project Coordinator to aid in the approval process. Here we have the Small Purchase Sole Source Justification Form. It is important to completely fill Section 1, Subrecipient Information, and Section 2, Sole Source Justification. Do you recall when Sole Source Justification Form is required? Remember, if only one price or rate quotation is received, the subrecipient is required to complete this form. Let's recap. 
When submitting for an approval of a small purchase to your FDOT project manager, you will submit a price analysis sheet, a small purchase form, applicable federal clauses list filled out, a minimum of three quotes for the good or services being purchased, a master contract or work order containing federal clauses. The third threshold, purchases for more than $35,000, is classified as competitive purchases. For competitive procurements, these types of goods and services being procured influences what procedures must be followed. There are two main types of competitive purchase procedures, sealed bids and competitive proposals. Sealed bids involve competitive bids used for high cost purchases of physical property, construction, or other services. For example, it's common to use sealed bids for heavy equipment purchases and the lowest price bidder that meets the established requirements will win the bid. Sealed bids are bids that are publicly solicited and a firm fixed price contract is awarded to the lowest priced responsible bidder whose bid conforms to all material terms and conditions. Competitive proposals, also referred to as a request for proposal, an RFP, should be issued when the nature of the procurement does not lend itself to sealed bidding and the recipient expects that more than one source will be willing and able to submit an offer or proposal. Regardless of the type of competitive purchase procedure, the following steps should be followed. Prepare solicitation package and identify evaluation method. Publicly advertise the solicitation. Receive and evaluate responses from at least three respondents. Select the vendor or contractor that accepts all applicable federal clauses. Provide appropriate documentation to the FDOT Transit Project Coordinator for approval, along with appropriate procurement checklists, if applicable. Obtain approval for the procurement from the FDOT Transit Project Coordinator. Complete the procurement process with the selected vendor. Keep documentation to support the method of purchase, basis for vendor selection, and bid evaluation. In summary, when submitting for an approval of a competitive procurements to your FDOT Transit Project Coordinator, you will submit the solicitation packages, which include RFPs and related addendums, vendor selection documentation such as proposal ranking and meeting summaries for selection process, applicable federal clauses list filled out, the response from vendors, master contract or work order containing federal clauses. Let's test your knowledge. What are the options or steps if a vendor or contractor will not accept the applicable federal clauses for procurement level? The applicable federal clauses must be accepted from any vendor or contractor you purchase from. This may involve an extensive search until one is found. If you cannot find a vendor or contractor to accept the federal clauses, you may need to use another funding source for this procurement. There are five main types of procurement. Professional services include the scope of practice of architecture, professional engineering, landscape architecture, or registered surveying and mapping. Operations or management services, such as accounting, legal, and administrative cost. Rolling stock, transit vehicles, such as buses, vans, cars, rail cars, locomotives, trolley cars or buses, ferry boats, and other vehicles used for support services construction related activities, materials and supplies. It is important to ensure that all materials and supplies that will be reimbursed with federal funds adhere to Buy America regulations. Seen here is a sample procurement checklist for professional services and architectural engineering services. Additional checklists exist for other remaining types of procurements. Procurement checklists should be submitted with other related procurement documents to the FDOT Transit Project Coordinator for review and approval. The subrecipient should ensure that the general procurement questions are answered for all checklists and that the applicable federal clauses are included in a master contract or purchase order. To properly fill out the form, the agency should include general information related to the contract at the top of the form. When filling out the second column, include the page number of the location of the federal clause in the master contract. State procurement requirements are significantly different from federal requirements. Today's discussions are mostly surrounding federal procurement requirements since this training is related to the federal funding programs. 
However, please be aware that procurements being completed with state-only funding are not required to undergo the same process. Seen here is a sample attorney certification to the FDOT. By submitting this form, the subrecipient is self-certifying that the applicable provisions of Florida Statute 287.057 and the agency's established procurement policies are being followed. This form would only be used when a procurement is being completed with only state funds. A special note, if subrecipients are only procuring vehicles from approved state contracts, subrecipients are not required to have an approved internal procurement policy. Subrecipients with small or competitive purchases are required to develop an internal procurement policy document that identifies the agency's graduated purchasing authority that outlines the purchase procedures by procurement threshold and outlines the agency's appeals and protest process. The subrecipient should ensure that the internal policy is approved by the FDOT Transit Project Coordinator and is updated every three years. A Notice of Grant Award, otherwise known as a NOGA, is issued to notify an applicant that they have been selected to receive a grant award. By signing a NOGA, grant subrecipients agree to comply with all applicable requirements. When the agency receives a NOGA, the agency should sign and return the NOGA. Wait to receive the fully executed NOGA and contact Lazarus Dinette to determine if TRIPS or Department of Management Services, also referred to as the DMS contract, can be utilized to purchase the awarded items. The FDOT contractor, Lazarus Dinette, listed in the NOGA, should be contacted to determine if the TRIPS or DMS contract can be utilized to acquire the awarded items on your NOGA. If the TRIPS contract is not utilized, please account for the time required to complete all procurement requirements. As a reminder, reimbursements will be made based on invoices or receipts that show the eligible costs were incurred. Utilizing the TRIPS or DMS contract will limit the amount of effort needed to meet state and federal procurement requirements. When ordering vehicles from the TRIPS or DMS contract, order packets must be emailed or faxed to Lazarus Dinet at the contact information shown on the screen. The order packet should include the order form, the agency's purchase order, which will be 10% of the total cost, the executed NOGA, and the certification of equivalent services if agencies are requesting non-accessible vehicles. Once the vehicles are delivered, the subrecipient should complete specific steps dependent on whether TRIPS or DMS was used to purchase the vehicles. If TRIPS was used, the subrecipient should log on to the TRIPS data center to accept the vehicle, print the agency letter and inspection report from the data center, and submit payment to the vendor for agency share of the total cost. If DMS contract is utilized, the subrecipient should email Lazarus the net copies of the vehicle delivery receipt, the application for title, and the certificate of origin. Finally, payment should be submitted to the vendor for the agency share of the total cost. If further clarification is needed, please get into contact with Lazarus the net as soon as possible. The TRIPS website is where you can find more information on your options for vehicle selection and purchase, along with other resources related to vehicle service and maintenance. The site has contracts available for download, including vehicle order packets, the list of available vendors and manufacturers, access to the TRIPS data center, and program staff contact information. The TRIPS website URL is tripsflorida.org. Some capital items that may be awarded, such as radios, computers, software, or preventative maintenance are not available for purchase through the TRIPS or DMS contracts. In these cases, the subrecipient is responsible for ensuring that all applicable procurement procedures are followed, including determine the type and level of procurement required based on the total cost of the items being procured, submit the appropriate procurement documentation to the FDOT. This may include checklists, quotes, and other items depending on the procurement type and level. Receive approval for the procurement from your FDOT project coordinator. Make the approved purchase. Submit invoice to your FDOT project coordinator for reimbursement. Keep all documentation related to the procurement on file. These documents will be reviewed during the triannual review process. Some subrecipients are reimbursed for preventative maintenance as part of federal capital awards. 
Similar to the management of the TRIPS contract, those reimbursements are processed by Lazarus Dinet. Prior to submitting an invoice for those services, you must ensure that you followed the established procurement process and have an up-to-date, fully executed maintenance agreement. Please keep in mind that all procurement process guidelines must be followed to maintain eligibility for reimbursement. Be sure that your agency understands and has completed all applicable requirements before making a procurement. We understand that procurement can seem daunting at first, but over time and with sound systems in place, the process will become routine. As part of its oversight program, the department provides technical assistance in the form of on-site meetings as well as resources and templates. We are here to help. In summary, while engaging in grant-funded procurements, there are a few key things to remember. Communicate with your FDOT project coordinator early and often to ensure all necessary steps are followed, even before initiating the procurement. Maintain thorough and organized records for easy invoicing and successful oversight reviews. Be aware of specific requirements associated with the funding source. Ensure that all applicable federal clauses are included in the vendor's master contract or in the purchase order. And finally, remember if the correct procurement procedures are not followed, corresponding expenses will not be eligible for reimbursement. Thank you for completing our TRIPS program and procurement training. If you have any questions on any of the topics covered in this training video, please reach out to your FDOT project coordinator.